Hey there, amplifiers. Thank you for tuning in. You know, in the business world, when you're dealing with the day-to-day whirlwind, it can be throwing you for a loop. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's up and what's down. You try to log in and look at your numbers, and they just look like numberese. You can't make sense of them. But you can fall in love with your numbers again. It can be done. But you need a plan. You need a process. And you need to understand numbers better so that you can use them. Yes, you can use numbers to look into the future. It can be really powerful, but you've got to know the process and do it right. Otherwise, you can be thinking you know what you're doing and running yourself into a wall, which is no good. Our guest today is really an expert when it comes to financial forecasting and knowing numbers. She's the founder of Love Your Numbers Now, CPA for over 25 years, and helps struggling businesses get a better understanding of their numbers and a plan for profits. So welcome to Growth Amplifier. Welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Carol LeBlanc. Carol, thank you for being here today. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here having this conversation with you. Happy for you showing up in the world and helping people out. Uh, There's a lot of times people are so caught up with running their business. They see money coming in. They know they're making money. They, They don't always give it the attention it deserves. But before we get into the heart of the conversation, if you wouldn't mind taking a quick moment and letting us know how you got to do what you're doing today. Thanks for that question. Um, Well, I've spent a lot of time sitting at a tax and audit firm desk doing tax returns for businesses. And people would often come with books that were a real mess. And if they were on extension, which often happened with these types of clients who weren't in touch with their numbers, they would be looking at the results of the past year, 10 months after that year had ended. <laughs> and um, it was really hard to see. And the, the firm that I was at also had a, like a belief running through the firm that people couldn't really understand. <laughs> um, and there, I was encouraged not to help too much, you know, like, oh, they won't, under-, I'm like, well, why can't we just tell them how to do it differently, help them more. And I think that, you know, as a byproduct of being too busy in a uh, traditional tax firm to f- provide that kind of adv- advisory. And I know that doesn't happen in all firms. There's a lot of great accountants out there, but I just thought there's got to be a better way to do this where people can have quality bookkeeping, know what's happening, timely information, and actually create structures so that people will look at their numbers and work with their numbers, uh, create a relationship with their numbers, and maybe even enjoy doing it. <laughs> and I, so, I love I, that. yeah. You know, it's you grow what you focus on, and sometimes people can focus on the problems, not where they want to go, not what's working, and then they're magnifying them. They're get, being too maybe too cautious when they should be pushing forward or vice versa. And so when you better understand your numbers, you're making informed decisions. And I just wanted to take a a moment to reflect on what you were saying, because I think it's something that people might need to think about because I've seen the same thing in my realm of the world, more from the marketing side where the, providers like we don't want to tell them too much because we don't want them to start doing it themselves and then we become less valuable but there's a there's a backside to that too right if if you can help your clients more and better understand you can actually go further together than if you're holding them back that's really interesting um Because if we're afraid to empower our clients with information and tools, that comes from a real lack scarcity mindset of like, and this is something I've also observed in the accounting profession is it's like holding hostage the information. And I know that sounds really extreme, but that's what it feels like to me. Like you have to take this 
big test to learn how to do it, which makes it seem like all the information is beyond the understanding of most people, unless you went to school and studied for this test. And then, you know, accounting services are not inexpensive. So it's like they're behind, the information is kind of like behind these walls where accountants will put themselves as like the saviors of it all. And, and I get it, we want to protect ourselves, but I, I just don't buy into that competition and like model. So it's, I want to collaborate with my clients and also love your numbers now is on a mission to teach 10,000 people how to do forecasting in their business. And the only way to do that is to say, this is how you do it. And most of the information people need for their businesses is actually a small part of what the whole, you know, body of accounting knowledge is. And so if we can help people know what they need to know to help them, then there's so many more opportunities that open up to partner with them because one of the biggest um, benefits that I see that my clients get by working with me is the time on the calendar to look at the numbers. So it's not everything I know or I've learned or what I can do to help them or how great a coach I may or may not be. It's that we're going to sit down and actually look at this together. And that's worth a lot. And people are wanting their accountants to partner with them in that way. I couldn't agree more. I remember early on, when hiring, I, I know there's an accountant, let's hire that person. They, they're doing the job. But then you come to find out there's people who will just check the boxes, fill in the numbers, and then there's people who can be proactive and, and help guide you in the right direction. Um, when it comes to f financial forecasting and people knowing their numbers, what is the top challenge that you see people making that they may not know that they're making? What is that challenge that is causing most people um, a deficit? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, big, the biggest challenge I see is that um, a lot of people view themselves as either not good at math not understanding, um, like they may be a creative entrepreneur and then they think, well, I'm not good at um, understanding the numbers. Also anxiety over what the numbers are saying <laughs> that makes you not want to look at it because it's like, well, if I don't look at it, you know, I don't have to deal with it, but actually your numbers exist whether you look at them or not. So you might as well use them to your advantage. Isn't that such a bizarre thing that we all do in some form or fashion in our lives? I know I've done that going to the doctor um, before where it's like I had something going on that I was concerned about. And like, I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't want them to tell me something. But it's a dumb thing to do because then you're not getting it treated, which is not helping it. In my case, luckily, it was nothing. But just that mentality. Oh, it's, it could be bad. So I don't want to look at it because then I'll know it's bad. Well, then you can do something about it. So what, for those people that are running into those challenges, uh, what's the solution? What's something that they, how can they start resolving that and getting over that? Yeah. Well, I think the solution to not looking at your numbers is to develop a regular monthly practice of adding financial forecasting to your business system. So that means that you create a forecast where, you know, it's a profit and loss by month that goes into the future with cash flow at the bottom so that you can look for 90 days ahead. So every month plan out the next 90 days and 90 days is a really powerful um, time period to look at because although some businesses can plan farther, um, a lot of businesses can really predict pretty accurately what's going to happen in the next 90 days. So, and then that framework of the forecast allows you to look at all of the activities in the business, have a financial um, representation, you know, mm -hmm. all of our marketing activities show up in our numbers, all of our, um, you know, how we treat our team or, you know, maybe we have like codependent relationships with our team members that we're not, a, you know, all the things that happen, maybe we're afraid to sell, maybe, um, you know, all the things that have come up in the company are demonstrated in the numbers. So when you look at the forecast, it's a framework to address all of these issues and they all come up. 
Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. Well, I really love that you're sharing that it's a framework. I'm, I'm a big advocate for frameworks, been leveraging frameworks and helping others leverage them as well because there's working hard, then there's following a system that can help you get a consistent result. And that's the spirit of a growth amplifier. So for those who are looking at this, because I know you can, if you're a bigger company, um, you might have the resolve to have a financial department or hire a CFO or something of that nature. But if you're a smaller company and maybe you're not at that point yet, maybe those aren't options for you. But what is a what is an amplified action, an action that people can take that if they're if they don't have this set up now, that they can begin the process of making forward progress. Because when first learning about this myself, I, I've got to admit, it was a little overwhelming. There's so many different things you've got to consider. And then you're like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> but but there's always a way to start making progress. So what's what's your suggestion for those who may not have that down, but they they want to have that insight and that clarity of where they're going? Well, I mean, people could take my class, which is called the Financial Forecasting Experience. And it's a group program where I teach business owners how to actually do forecasting. So there's a spreadsheet and um, we do it as a group. Uh, and it's a great way to get started because it's it's something you can do yourself or your even your bookkeeper could do for you and your business. Um, there's also great books about forecasting. So I would say, you know, get curious about forecasting and figure out where you can learn it because I never really learned forecasting in college. This is all something I learned um, later on where I thought, how can I take um, people on this journey of loving their numbers and knowing their numbers? Speaking of books, is there a book that you would recommend that something that you've read or, or thought, hey, this is a helpful book um, that you could share? Um, forecasting or any book? Um, it could be forecasting, but a book that you think would be helpful for people who are looking to improve their business? I mean, the book that I always recommend that has made a huge impact in my life is The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And it has nothing to do with forecasting, but it has everything to do with being in the flow Um and following like the journey of your life to create like total abundance. And that's one thing that I'm really passionate about too, is that the forecast creates a clear intention of what you want to have happen. So it takes from, you know, this like um, disconnected revenue goals that we see thrown around in the coaching world of like whatever figure revenue goal that we should have. That's a vanity um, situation to what exactly do you need for your business? Um, and the forecast creates that clear intention. And then when you connect with your vision of what you want to happen, the chances of you creating that are exponential. I really like that because I think there is something within our culture in general where you can get caught up with keeping up with the Joneses or what I feel like I should have to do based on society's pressures. But ultimately, it's your life. You're the captain of your ship. Define it the way you want it and then build your business around it. Be true to yourself. And that's because there's a lot of people that have a lot of money. They're not happy. And there's people that don't have much, but they are zenful. Would you rather have? <laughs> we want to be happy. We want to be in peace with ourselves. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who have a lot of revenue that don't have a lot of profit. And there's people yes. who have less revenue and more profit than those that have these big machines that they've built that are 
really hard to control and manage. Oh, yes, that's seeing, I get to see that. Um, get to see that behind the scenes. Sometimes some of the big businesses you'd think would be really profitable. Sometimes they're barely scraping by or even going in the red. And you wouldn't have any idea on the outside that that was the case. Um, so this has been really awesome, Carol. Uh, for those who think, hmm, this is interesting. There's a class. I want to learn more about Carol, more about what she does, more about this class. Where could they go and, and what can they do? Yeah, you can go to Love Your Numbers Now and um, find out all the information about the class. There's also a, a free subscription tracker and a little teaching about that. So if you want to like dip your toe into forecasting and just start tracking something, mm -hmm. um, subscriptions is a great place to start because we all have so many of them, especially for our online businesses. So they can get that free and try it out and maybe join the for financial forecasting experience. Awesome. All right. So one of the traditions we have to end these interviews is if you could share something that you've picked up on your journey that would be helpful for others on theirs, it can be related to your business, it could be anything you'd like to share, just feel free to share as you care. Oh, something I've picked up on my journey. I mean, I guess the biggest thing that I think helps in business is acknowledging that we are the creators of our lives and taking full responsibility for that. And, and it comes into play with forecasting because when we look at what's really happening, instead of um, burying our head and um, living in the past, looking in the rearview mirror, we, we can create anything we want to create. And having that tool of the clarity of what you exactly need can help you do that. I love that. That's great advice for some people that I know need to hear it. So thank you for sharing that. And if you've tuned into this, take a moment to reflect on that thought. Uh, we all from time to time can get wrapped up in maybe something we think we want because it's been shared with us. We've been brainwashed in a sense, but when we can get grounded and really step into our true selves, we could take actions that are aligned with what, who we are and what we really want and what our purpose is. And you can't go wrong when you're stepping into your true self. So take some time, reflect on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. And if you have something to share on the topic, Carol, it's been a pleasure having you on the show and sh having you to share your insight and information to help people amplify their business. I highly appreciate you. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate you too. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.